All right, welcome back everybody to the shop. It is Tuesday and it is, it is not take it apart Tuesday. I'm not going to take apart anything, but it's a tea thing. It's Tech Talk Tuesday, Tech Review, Tech Talk. I like Tech Talk, Tech Talk Tuesday. I am going to talk about uh, FirstNet from AT&T, what it is. Uh, if you're not in the first response world or emergency comms world, you may not know what it is. So talk about that a little bit. And then I'm going to do a review of the Sam, uh, not Samsung. That's not the right one. I'm going to do a review of the Sonim XP8 phone. So stick around for Tech Talk Tuesday. All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. It's supposed to be Take It Apart Tuesday. If you didn't catch the video last Tuesday, we took apart, I took apart a fuel filter, like a tractor fuel filter that was all encased in metal, so you couldn't really see what was in it. So we took it apart. If you're interested in checking that out, I'll link it towards the end of the video, and you can find it in my videos section, list it there, you know, whatever. So what are we doing today? Tech Talk Tuesday or something. You just got to put tease in it because it's Tuesday. Taco Tuesday. Uh, so AT&T FirstNet service. We'll start with that. FirstNet, let's talk first about it. Uh, so, in a nutshell, uh, first responders more and more uh, nowadays are using cellular communications to do a lot of stuff. Transfer data, transfer videos, transfer pictures. You know, if you're at a sporting venue and your law enforcement detail or your fire detail or your EMS detail, it, and you have all of your first responders worked into a communications net on a cell phone, and uh, you know, parents come up and say, hey, my girl's missing to one of the police officers. The police officer potentially could say, do you have a picture of your child? And they're like, yeah, it's on my phone. And they pull it up and here's the picture of the child. And the, the law enforcement officer could take a picture of their phone of the picture of the, of the child. And using the technology could blast that picture to every first responder's device that's working that event and then every first responder would have a picture of the missing person right there on their phone, then they can start looking for them, right? So there's great potential for doing that. First responders have radios, and radios are great, but radios primarily are a voice-based communication system. Now, you can talk about data terminals and some stuff like that in the actual cars and stuff like that. Yeah, I get it, but at least where I'm from out here, data uh, or uh, radios are, are just a voice, a strict voice. So there's a lot of potential for first responders using uh, you know, the cellular type of communications for first response. And uh, another issue with that is, as that's an increasing thing, if you're in a venue packed with you know, Lucas Oil Stadium, back before COVID, uh, would, uh, can hold 70,000 people. The Indianapolis 500, they never really release how many people are there, but they estimate, folks estimate, there may be 250,000 people that are attending that event, not including the workers and the first responders that are there and the race car teams and stuff like that. Just 250,000 attendees to the event. Uh, and so the cellular system gets overloaded. And so if that system's overloaded, then first responders can't use it. So FirstNet is about building out a system that first responders can use. It's a, a band in the radio spectrum that's just exclusive for that. So while people uh, the general public are over here using this section of the radio frequency for cellular communication and sending videos and live chatting and doing whatever they're doing. The first responders can be over here in their section of the spectrum communicating on sort of a private infrastructure network anyway. And AT&T was the one that, that was awarded that. So that's FirstNet in a nutshell. If you're an amateur radio operator and you get QST, I think it was the September issue current issue, uh, September 2020, actually had like a page and a half write up about FirstNet. So if you have the magazine in hand or online, you could go and check that out as well. Uh, so that is FirstNet in a nutshell. Um, what next? Let's talk about this phone. Let me swing you guys down so you can check out this phone. All right. Hey, look at that. The Battle Pig. Battle Pig strolled in. This is the uh, new shop mascot, the old number 53 Battle Pig. Move along, little piggy, move along. All right, so back to business here. Here's this uh, Sonim XP8. It's a 4G LTE phone, and I think uh, it's just on AT&T now, but it can be unlocked and put on others, I think. Um, but it's uh, definitely available at and You sell it. You don't have to be a FirstNet subscriber to get this phone. 
but some of the benefits of the phone won't be available unless you're a FirstNet subscriber. And by the way, I didn't mention this, but you have to be a first responder. I mean, that sort of makes sense, but you have to be a first responder to be able to subscribe to FirstNet. Motion alert detected. Um, so anyway, the phone. So let's just talk about the phone. It's sort of a, a, a ruggedized phone, or it is a ruggedized phone. It's, uh, you know, pretty uh, pretty beat proof and stuff like that. It is actually waterproof down to like six feet for 30 minutes. And so, you know, if you're a firefighter out fighting fire with water, if it gets wet, not a big deal. I've actually had mine on some training missions. We've been out uh, spraying down some hoses with some uh, some new guys and I'll just whip my phone out in the middle of the stream and start taking pictures and video and stuff like that. People are like, oh, your phone. I'm like, yeah, don't worry about it. Uh, it's drop rated, so you know you could drop it a few feet and uh, occasionally, and it won't uh, it won't be a problem to it for it. So, and that's also nice because if you have it in the pocket and you lean against a you know, corner apparatus, you don't bend your phone, break your phone in half, stuff like that. It is dust resistant and waterproof, dust resistant sort of makes sense. And it's intrinsically safe. So if you're in, in, if you're in a hazardous material environment where there's flammable vapors and you're using your phone, it won't ignite the surrounding atmosphere. So that's sort of interesting. So yeah, it is, it is sort of battle proof. The um, buttons on the outside, typical buttons. This is a push to talk button, sort of if you guys have, if you're old enough to remember the Nextel push to talk craze, sort of the same thing, except this phone and the system, when you have it all installed, will actually interface with the public safety radio systems that you may have at your agency or department or whatever. Volume button, screen off and on button, power button. This does have, this can, all these buttons can be software configured. So you got your little red button here, like it could be, you know, oh my gosh, I'm in trouble button or whatever. I do not have mine programmed to do that. Um, and then you have a yellow button here to do whatever. I have found, I don't, I don't use any of these buttons. I, I just have never gotten into the habit of, I mean, I use a volume button and a screen button and stuff like that. Um, one thing on the phone, it's charge port back here. Um, has a little cover on it, and then I would imagine if that's not closed, it's not waterproof. There's a little gasket in there. Issue with this is when you have your um, USB cord in there, and this sticks out all night like that, it has a tendency not to want to stay sealed, and so it'll just it'll pop back out right like that. It, it won't go in there. But then after it stays in this position for a little while, and that, that rubber probably relaxes a little bit or plastic, whatever this is, it'll go and it'll snap in there. Uh, it does have some accessories that go with it. Um, there's a drop-in charger, a couple points for this, which would be pretty cool. You could avoid opening this up all the time. Drop it in the charger. Problem is the stupid drop-in charger is like 250 bucks. And there is also no like headphone jack on it, which sort of makes sense because you don't want a hole in the side of a waterproof phone. But then like I have a square reader for taking credit card payments and you have to have that to put it into your phone to use it. Um, you can get some stuff, some accessories, like there's some proprietary connectors here and one on top of the phone, but all of their stuff is like huge expensive. So you can get a little device that has a phone or a headphone jack in it, but it's really expensive. You can also get like a car mount that it flips into your car and, you know, mounts on the dash or like a radio type deal. Um, so yeah, that's sort of the, the outside of the phone. I have some issues on the inside of the phone, the operating system. It's a typical Android type operating system where the company takes uh, this Android software or whatever and then customizes it to fit their phone. Um, so it's all the Android stuff. I'm not going to talk about that. You know, so if you don't have an Android phone, you got an iPhone, it's the same stuff. It's just different, right? Um, so what are some of my issues with this phone right now? Uh, well, early on, um, well, that was interesting. Early on, um, I'd have some issues, I'd be like, oh, I have issues. And it seems like the company would roll out a software update or an, op or an OS op update, operating system update, and it would correct the problem. So I was like, oh, cool, they're on top of it. Um, for the, I haven't seen an, I don't know when the last time I saw an operating uh, system update was. So I don't know if they've just given up or um, you know, they're on their next line or whatever. And I don't know either if it's just this phone, like this phone's a lemon, or it's across the entire line of these XP8s that's an issue. 
early on when I was trying to troubleshoot and solve these problems, I was on the forums online and folks were saying, no, that happens on my phone too. It's not just your phone. So I have a suspicion that this is a, a XP8 model issue, not just this phone. Uh, so what are some of those things? A couple of them, the fingerprint reader doesn't always work. Ah, look, there it goes. Too many attempts. Try again later. Doesn't work. I'd say it doesn't work about 80% of the time. So then you have to, okay, here. No. Uh, 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 too many attempts. Try again later. So then you have to get in here and do your little thing there. Um, so that's really annoying, especially annoying when you've got apps on here that use your fingerprint to get into the app, like your banking apps, and 80% of the time it doesn't work. And I can never remember those passwords. Um, so that's annoying. Second annoying issue, and this is beyond an annoyance, is you'll be in the middle of a conversation with somebody on the phone and they'll be like, hey, uh, I can't hear you. Are you there? Are you still there? They no longer can hear you talking, but you can hear them fine. There's no indication that anything has gone wrong with the phone. Uh, and they just, all of a sudden they can't hear you. And, uh, and that'll also happen when you call somebody, um, the phone will go into an air. I don't know what happens with the phone. It just, it happens and you call somebody and you know, you can hear, you can hear the button push it, pushing and you can, you know, hear it ring and they answer, you can hear them and you're like, Hey, okay, I'm here. And they're like, I can't hear you. Are you there? Are you there? Well, of course, what do you do? You hang up and you call them back. It still doesn't work. The only way to get it to work again is to hang up, uh, hang up, reset the phone, wait for the phone to reset and call the person back. And I'm looking for a job and I want to start a small business. Could you imagine if I was in the middle of a job interview and all of a sudden my phone messed up and they couldn't hear me. And not only did I have to call them back, I had to reset my phone and wait four minutes for the phone to come back before I could call them back and hope they hadn't already decided not to hire me. So, yeah, that was an issue. Uh, Wi-Fi calling doesn't work. I'm standing next to the Wi-Fi router and I'm connected and surfing to the internet. I decide to make a phone call to find out about something. It says, you don't have service, which I get it. I'm inside a metal pole barn. You don't have cell service. Connect to Wi-Fi for Wi-Fi calling. I, what? I, I am. I'm, I'm five feet from the router. It, you know, the router's right over there. I'm five feet from it. I am connected to Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi calling doesn't work. And then there are other issues. The camera app that comes with the phone really stinks. I had to download a different camera app from the Play Store. Their uh, notifications and things don't sound, or they do, or they don't, or they, you know, you say, I want it to sound like this, but it never gets to sound like that. It sounds like every other thing. So that's crazy stuff. So that's my review. If you guys really want one of these phones, caveat emptor, buddy. Buyer beware. Um, that's all I have to say about this phone. So what do I do about it? Let me swing you guys back up. I'll tell you about it. All right, so this dog won't hunt. What do I do about it? Well, um, I thought I'd start with AT&T. I still have, I'm still paying on this phone. And so I thought, well, I'll go with them. Um, so I went to the AT&T store and I said, hey, you know, so, so you guys get to know that look on somebody's face when they totally agree with what you're saying, but they can't say that they agree. It's like the look that's like, I work for this company, so I can't tell you that you're right, but you're totally right. That's the look I got from the guy in the AT&T store when I took this phone into him and I said, this phone is quite possibly the worst phone I've uh, in the world. And it's definitely the worst phone I've ever had. And, and as that look instantly appeared, like he says, you're totally right, but I can't say that you're right. Um, so he looks it up, long story short, he looks it up and goes, hey, you got a three year warranty on the phone. You want the phone number? I was like, yeah, I'll take the phone number. So I drive over to my Home Depot and I sit in a parking lot and I do a little research on the number and it's not for Sonim, um, it's for AT&T, which, uh, okay, whatever. And uh, I go to the Sonim website and sure enough, three year warranty on the phone. So I call the number and work through that, the first, you know, the automated thing, type in your number and do whatever, get through that. Of course it can't solve my problem. So I get to uh, a, uh, an associate or whatever they call them. And she, she takes the same information that I just gave to the computer. And uh, she says, oh, well, you know, explain all that stuff to her. She says, well, you just got a year warranty on that phone. Uh, and you've had it for over a year. I was like, I have had it for over a year, but the, the person at the AT&T store that I just was at said it has a three year warranty on it. And the website for Sonim says it has a three year warranty on it. So I'm not saying that your screen doesn't say it's a one year warranty. I'm just wondering why 
somebody else from AT&T and the company's website says it's a three-year warranty. So she looks and she goes, oh yeah, you're right. Their website does say that. She says, let me, uh, let me talk to the Sonim and see if they're supposed to handle this issue or if AT&T is supposed to handle this issue and our screen's just wrong. I was like, okay, but I was afraid of what she said next because I knew it was coming. That wasn't it. She said, let me put you on hold. So probably eight minutes into this phone call, we'll just say 10 minutes into this phone call, dealing with the automated operator, you know, talking to her, nice lady. Um, 10, 10, 12 minutes into this phone call, I get put on hold. I look at my phone 27 minutes later. Well, no, yeah, 27 minutes into the phone call, I'm like, I don't know. You think she would come back and say, hey, I'm still working on your issue, or hey, yeah. 32 minutes into the phone call, I get the deal, the automated thing that comes and says, all of our associates are busy at this time. If you'd like to leave a message, or if you'd like to stay on hold, or if you'd like to wait, somebody will get back to, with you at one point or the other. It's the call, it's the message you get when you call and haven't talked to anybody yet. So somewhere I got lost in their system. So I tried to leave a message for somebody to call me back and it rambled off some random phone number that I said, so you are calling from a random phone number that wasn't mine. Oh. So um, I, I didn't leave a message. I knew how I was going to solve the issue. I went to Home Depot and did, did a little thinking. Um, and, you know, even if they sent me a brand new phone like this and it worked perfect, the AT&T coverage out here, is still horrible. The first net people, whatever, they have not built out any infrastructure out here. Uh, I understand, now I'll, I'll, I'll put this in there, um, that in some places up in northern Indiana, north of like I-70, um, it, it works pretty good. They got AT&T coverage up there. But in my neck of the woods, unless you're in a larger city or next to an interstate, I am neither, um, you don't have AT&T coverage is worth, worth anything. So. So um, even though if I had a brand new phone that worked perfect, unless I was standing next to my Wi-Fi hotspot or my, you know, my Wi-Fi router, I wouldn't be able to make calls. I wouldn't be able to communicate. And the whole intent of having a first responder phone is when you're out fighting a fully engaged and fully involved house fire, you, you've got a phone that you can work with and pull up maps and communicate with people and do, you know, whatever. If you don't have the service to back it, it it's not worth anything. So I was previously a Verizon customer. In fact, I still had my LG V20 phone and it still worked. And actually I've been using it because I'd hotspot through the AT&T phone so I could use my Square reader and take credit card payments at the farmer's market. Anyway, so I still had this phone. So I went to Verizon and long story short, because I had the phone already and um, yeah, because I already had the phone and it worked, I uh, got a prepaid plan that gives me unlimited everything and that does have like, and they don't call them data caps, they call it throttling, right? But um, unlimited everything with throttling, um, it will only cost me, the, the plan in a couple of months will only cost me $5 more than the plan I was paying for this. Um, so I solved my AT&T issues by going back to Verizon. Hey, AT&T, can you hear me now? All right. Oh, hey, look at that. Look who wandered into the set. This is the shop pig, the battle pig, number 53. Yeah, here you go. All right, get out of here. Go, go, go. Change, charge, charge the battery pack. Oh my God. Ah, gotta plug it in, it doesn't like me. All right, there we go. Are we recording? We are recording. Excellent. So that might make the uh, end, of the, uh, end of the video highlight there. That's my little, you guys, you guys you ever catch me doing this? It's my little like, okay, cut here and start the video when I'm in editing. So there you go. All right. Welcome back everybody.